Hi guys, I just wanted to introduce you to uh, Paracord um, Woven Lighter Wraps. I copied this idea from, uh, um, what was that channel's name? Um, the Weavers of Eternity Paracord. Um, right now, I figured out I can make uh, like $5 a piece off these with the fee. Well, the, the lighter costs, this is a brand new Bic lighter. Um, plastic edition so it doesn't melt the um, outer sleeve because if you and this costs about a dollar a little over in a five pack or a seven pack I got some uh, cheap paracord I got from Team U um, the camouflage strand um, I've got a uh, I've got a uh, paracord stitching kit and uh, it's got a few different things in there, but what I'm gonna use them today, is probably this when I'm finish the, the project itself, the lighter, and uh, one of these lacing needles, and I want the big one, I would probably use today. So this one right here, and uh, put that down, and I will get started. See, this is what I use to cut the cord, it's a pair of wire cutters, it's not the best. Um, it's got a little bit of a wire, which I put some tape over just to keep using it. So I'll put these two aside. Um, so for now, and I also need a pencil. I've got a Ticonderoga number two, a lighter, classic, some paracord, um, lacing needle, and this is a smudger tool it's called. You can get all this stuff online. Um, I got a label on it, it says eight feet. This is eight feet of paracord, by the way. This has been pre, I already cut this, burnt the edges, make sure it doesn't um, fall apart. But here we go. So I gotta undo this right here really quick. And what I usually do, the same thing that was in the other video, is put this right like that, leave a little bit of end left, and the pencil gives it just enough space so when you actually uh, weave up the um, paracord that it's not gonna have no space, because if you have no space, you, you're gonna have a hard time so I just go around here a few times and this gets easier. This is a, this is what I do. So once you get the first or second strand down, you can just rotate it across like this. Oh, I got a knot in there. That's not good. Not, not good. Ha 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 ha. Well, all right. Take this knot, get that out of there. Look at Everything else should be fine. Got the camera moving on me. Okay. So I'm just gonna wrap this around as tight as I can. Put these, cause it'll get smaller as, as soon as it's woven. Make sure this is pretty straight. Wrap it all the way around until I hit the bottom. And I'm using a Ticonderoga number two, um, a Bic, just your standard Bic lighter. Bic lighters are pretty good, even for survivalists, I would say, because uh, you can drop these in the water, you can throw them in the washing machine. They'll come out as soon as they're dry. Most of the time, they'll still fire right up. So as long as it's got fuel, that's just about all you need to worry about. It was not wet at the time. And, uh, you get a few uses out of these. But you can also take this wrap off of a lighter and use it on another lighter, which, which is uh, pretty cool. Right here, go right through here to make it stay. And uh, there we go. So I'm gonna tighten that up like that. 
Okay, so this has got this one paracord line going over here, through here, wrapped around, and back out. But uh, I'm gonna have to put the lacing needle on. And I forgot a key ring, but I wanted to make this video anyway. Um, I got key rings in my set. I just, uh, my tools, but they're usually cheap. You can find them on all sorts of websites and stuff for almost a little bit of nothing. So I could take this, and since I got this done, pull this pencil right out, and it gives me just enough space, and, I, and we won't use the pencil again. It gives me just enough space to go up, since it's already down below the lighter. Go up, go through, and then up the other one. See every other one? And, uh, Let's go through a couple. I'm gonna do the whole video on this. Here we go. Go up through that one. And I got it on the side of the desk here. And then just make sure it's straight or it's not gonna look right. Go up, go through, go up, pull that up through and you can do it to the whole line of them pull that up go through pull that up go through and then um run that through there now this takes some time once you get used to it you can do the first few uh loops really quick tighten it down just a little bit I don't want to get to make it hard too close or they'd get hard to go through because one will go on top of each other if I tighten it too much at this point. But this is down, so I'm going to go over this one, under this one, over, under. And I think you get the point now. But, and I'll just continue lacing or weaving these through and uh, down down and this usually takes for me, when I started out, I think it took an hour and a half to lace these and put the key ring on and everything and go out there and melt the ends. If I don't melt the, melt the ends, they'll fray. And that's not even fun putting them into the lighter or, you know, wrapping projects itself with it fraying. So I always burn the ends when I cut them. It doesn't make a, a lot of sense not to. It becomes more of a problem than a solution. So this goes right through here like that and uh, then since I got down the last my last uh, weave is down under this one I'm gonna go over and then go under do the exact opposite and then tighten this down and it's starting to take shape you can see little ridges and how it and these are useful for cordage all sorts of things you can buy the you can actually buy paracord with a tinder in it um you can buy it with fishing line and there's this survivor cord i've never tried it it's a little bit too expensive for me i'll have to try it sometime but not now and there's also uh, different brands. Survivor cord is probably the highest quality, but I haven't, I, I, I don't know because I've never tried it. But right now I'm just dealing with, I think it's nylon paracord. It's a website called temu.com that sells it. I've also noticed they sell some of the stuff that was on Amazon, like a uh, PS cook paracord which is P-S-K-O-O-K. 
and teamu is t-e-m-u dot com and you can uh, get also wild air i think it was called the brand name there's a few of them that sell on amazon honestly i bought this on amazon i bought this on amazon or yeah my uh wire cutter that i bought on amazon um this i bought on amazon this pencil it was just a walmart ticonderoga i don't like to use too much cheap stuff because if i use it all the time you know at the same time i'm one of the guys that would just wear a shirt out to nothing and not even worry about it but this i used to be i still do kind of but i figured out ways to make it last a little longer but go over under over under and just keep doing this until it until it's finished and then eventually I'll take it off um, adjust it a bit cut the ends make sure they stay with the lighter I'll use another lighter to cut the ends or not cut the ends but uh, uh melt the ends if you don't they'll fray like I said and it's no fun playing with frayed paracord. It's just a hassle. And I frayed a little bit of that right out there in the side, if you can see it right there. But I don't want to do that too much or it's going to turn out bad. There we go. Now you got a little knot right there. I'm going to pull it and uh, make sure it's straight. Yep, that's straight. I'm going to go under. Go over, under, over, under. You're that or under, over, but I think you get the point. And I kind of go a little bit farther away from where I started. Since this, I can move it back and tighten it up. And I just pretty much dropped the thing. Um, and this will... And this is just a weave pattern. The cool thing about this is by how it's made, they don't come apart very easy. And if you melt the ends to the rest of the um, cord, it makes it that much harder to come apart. So they actually last a long time. They lose their uh, appearance. Like they'll get all dirty and stuff after a while. Nobody really want them, but for the cost of a lighter, if you buy a pack of just regular Bix like the classic ones like I have here, the assorted colors maybe like at Walmart or Dollar General or one of these stores that they have I mean I'm in Michigan but I'm not sure where you're at but there's Walmarts all over the place in the United States um you can get quite a deal on them and then go and uh sell them you can actually make money probably just selling them piece by piece just straight off the bat but nobody's gonna want to buy them that way without the wrap so you put a little bit of time in i've got like this is my 12th one i made that i've got up in my inventory so far so I, i've been making a few of them i usually set for uh making one or two every day but yeah, so you sell these for like five or ten dollars, somewhere in that range, is what I would do. I'm not sure about the demand for them. It's kind of a novelty thing, but it does provide a really handy way, especially if you put the key ring on one of the ends, to uh, hold a lighter and keep it with the rest of your um, personal carry items. And, uh, and then you got the excess cord you can use, tear it apart if you wanted to, which that's handy altogether. So I don't really see too much of a downside to this, having one of these. And yeah, I believe the laws still apply where, and it's sketchy. It's, I don't think it's exact. I'm not sure in the area, but 
um, they, uh, call it drug paraphernalia. So, like, uh, if you sold a miner a lighter and they start using it for, yeah, drugs, you can be in trouble for that, I think. I'm not sure. I never sold them to miners, but that's one thing to be cautious about. Um, yeah, I'm going right through this, uh, the actual strands. But right through this, um, I'm going to put this through here so it doesn't get wrapped around in there. And right through here. And then sometimes this doesn't stay in the, um, in the lacing needle. With this lacing needle, I believe, I'm not sure, but I believe it's got a screw, um, kind of, um, hole in the back here, and you can kind of screw it in and push it at the same time. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, that's what I do. Go under this one. Well, I think it's about time I take it off. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna take this right off. Make sure I don't make it any smaller. It's gonna be a real pain. But what I do, as you see this, and we've done this step before, this is the first thing we put on, right? So I find the end to that and pull it right through. Um, and then find the other end of the side because this is just straight line going through and it's not good to have in there at least as far as I know. But uh, yeah, so that's gone. That's, that's just excess cord. Um, go down, up, down, up, and up through here. And then I've got to adjust the little windings um, and get a key ring out, make a cow's hitch on it. And I'm just gonna go right here you see this other cord we started with, the first ones we put down? I'm gonna go right through and put it right next to it since it does the same pattern, at least on this one. If you have different cord, it's of course gonna wind different depending on the thickness and everything. The quality of the cord, all sorts of. But you pull this, you got that pulled. I don't want it to, I really don't want it to bend too much and then I'll go grab a key ring out of my kit you can use tackle boxes you can use a little organizer me myself I've got a this is the key ring cheap one inch key ring nothing special most of this stuff is nothing special the paracord I mean most people don't have it but the rest of the stuff most people have um pull this a little bit there so I'm gonna pull this out here too and go down and pull it until I find uh, about the middle section of a which is right right here that's the middle section it's uh reverse from this where I put the two together this one I want on one side and this is what I want on the other so I'm gonna make a cow's hitch I'm gonna go push this down, push this down, and it's usually a little bit to play with. And uh, go around, and right, right up there. And that's my cow's hitch. I should be able to get rid of that, get that out of there a little bit. Yeah. And I can tighten the cow's hitch up again. That's what I want to do. Make sure it doesn't come loose. Tighten that right up. Um, and then it's just enough fit for the lighter that, uh, well, I don't want it that way, do I? Because there's no excess I can get off. I don't want it on that side, or else I'm going to have to weave it through every winding. That's what I'm 
talking about there. Um, go over here, list through. Okay, it's fairly loose. I can play with it just a little bit. Over here, and I see the big sign right here. That's what I'm, what I've been doing. Keep them all uniform, you know, by uh, going through here. And I'll put it right, so the key ring's right on top of there. And just go back and forth and try to get it on there. And what I've been doing is I use this, the smudger, you can kind of pry it, pry the um, paracord rings down. Since I don't really care about damaging the lighter too much, it's just disposable, you know, if you just kind of feel a replaceable unit, you just kind of buy it, get rid of it. For the most part, that's how people use them. So what I do care about is having it tight enough on the lighter, not to fall off easily. So I just kind of go back and forth and just push this down until it uh, is all on there. Push it down. And I see this one. Well, let's uh, let's move that a little bit. There we go. I don't want to have it look bad. And I don't know what looking bad means, but at the same time, man, I lost a little bit of fluid there. Sometimes I get that, but that's just why I start with a brand new one. I don't want to. Um, deliver a bad product. I don't want to deliver an empty lighter either or anything. So I always start with new ones. Um, I always buy the classics because the ones with a design usually have it printed on a plastic wrapping around the lighter. And by the time I melt the ends, if it's on the lighter, it's going to melt the plastic sleeve thing they have on for the design too. And that, that's a trial and error thing I've learned. But I can make them on a classic lighter and pull them off and put, do the same thing and put them onto a design lighter, lighter with a design on it. So either way, but just while I got this done, all I need to do is take it outside and melt the edges, melt, melt the ends. And then what I do is use this smudger tool, this piece right here to flatten the ends and smooth it. There's different smudging tools you can use too. I've gotten a lot better at this since I started. Looked up a lot of different little things. It's just kind of my hobby. I want to make money off it, but at the same time, it's like, what do you do? You know, I mean, I'm regularly in computers and I work at a factory, but I mean, it's, a lot of uh, solving problems. All right. And down, down, down. And let's see. So I should build that. Okay. That's nice, somewhat tight. Um, see, this is where uh, it goes down here on one side, but down the other. So there's two strands through this one. They're the same. And this is. And that's my finished product besides uh, cutting the edges with a, uh, so I'll cut a little bit off extra. I'll leave a little extra there so I can melt the ends. And uh, by the time I cut that off, go up there and melt the ends and smooth it down with my tool, that would be my finished product. I can put it on other little wrap. I can put it on other, other lighters too, but for the most part, I just sell them with lighter too. There ain't no point in not doing that as far as I look at it. Um, I hope you have a good day and uh, enjoy wrapping your paracord lighters. Um, see you in the next video.